going actually 30 year, 38 years ago, maybe to 1981, uh, when you were taking a port portrait session with a special person named Toni Morrison. Can you take us back to that day? What do you remember? Uh, Toni Morrison walked into my studio in February 1981. I was 29. I was sort of starting my career as a photographer. And she was smoking a pipe. And I remember, you know, someone asked me recently, what do you remember from that? And I remember her confidence. And as a photographer, you kind of read people and you can sense if they're nervous. And she, did, she was perfectly fine. You know, she was cool. And that was the beginning of our friendship. It continued. I became a kind of photographer of choice for her. We did book jackets together and press pictures. And later, she inspired a whole series I did, uh, starting with The Blacklist on, on identity. And uh, it was really, I think, a privilege just to be her friend. Of all the subjects that you photographed, uh, when do you realize that Toni Morrison needed a documentary? <laughs> I think uh, around the time of the blacklist when we did, I did a, uh, there were 23 people in that film and I thought each one of them deserved a documentary. But if I were to do the first one, it would be Toni Morrison. And, you know, at a certain point a few years ago, I just felt she was in her early 80s and I thought it's now or never if I'm really going to do this. And Toni is a very private person. She does not authorize biographies. She won't, not, she won't write an autobiography. Mm -hmm. And I asked her if she would consider it, and she did not say no. And I knew that was a yes. <laughs> and and um, it took a little time to kind of figure out how I was going to do this. But uh, you know, she's 88 now. Can you analyze for us a little bit this very unique structure, even the way you photograph Tony versus the other people, the way you employ artwork, still images, and archival footage? How did that all come to you, into this amazing piece? Uh, I was an art history major at Columbia, so I have a, a lot of love for the art world, and I knew a lot of the artists. I had spent 20 years photographing artists. Uh, and I wanted to incorporate that somehow into the film. It's you don't really see fine art paintings in documentaries usually. If you do, it's an illustration of something. But here I wanted to kind of have it feel something. And it was also a way to bring in 24 African-American artists' work into it, people who revered Tony, loved Tony, or were in, you know, very influenced by Tony. Uh, I also shot Tony direct to camera, which I had, the, the list films were direct to camera, and I love that. But I thought here maybe I could have Tony tell the story direct to camera, and everyone else talks off camera. And it was a way to make her the, the center of it. She's telling her story, and they're sort of secondary talking about her. Uh, you, it worked, <laughs> but if you if it didn't, you know, you're stuck with it. So it was a kind of a risky thing to do because I've not seen docs that do that. But I felt that it was a way to kind of give her agency in a sense, that it was her telling the story she wanted to tell very intimately. Before this project came to you, what was your idea of Toni Morrison? Well, that's a good question because it's got such depth to it. I really can't. I can't put that in a particular, I can't capsulize that because she is such, um, she's such a force um, and her awareness of that kind of presence. So she's so authentic and that's the thing that really continues to be very important for me and resonates with me. But um, when uh, Timothy called and said Toni Morrison, that's all I needed to hear. You know, I knew that it was going to be an incredible and powerful journey creatively. And um, I will say this, that they, Timothy and his team, uh, you all gave me incredible flexibility to, to try different 
textures. I mean, this, this score has so many different genres that I love. Jazz, vocals, solo piano, fiddle, upright bass. And a lot of it was music that had been tempted in, in terms of um, textures. You guys had placed a lot of upright bass, and um, so that was a good point of departure. But we all just, you know, it's, it's, her work has an energy field that's very, very powerful and very visceral. And I think that as a creative person, if you can surrender or yield to that, then the work itself begins to, it's conversation, and it begins to gestate, it begins to create itself. And, and trusting that and having a group of people that are in that synergy is, is really what helped to create this, this score for me. The song that closes the film right. was composed and performed by you. That's right. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. That was another, I mean, this was like, I just want to take them with me wherever I go. Can you, you guys be my, yeah, clone. Um, that was an incredible um, gift because typically, you know, the end title, it's, it's a song that you can, they could have licensed it or had others create it. But I think we had all been in this really um, very, very intense and, and intimate process. So again, it was just, it was a creative choice that I really, really appreciate. This film has to do a lot about race in America. What is your reflection about the importance of this film and Toni Morrison, not just in the past, but in the present. And what is the, op the optimistic view that you can give us for the future? I'm not sure I can give an optimistic view of the future. <laughs> um, we'll know that in 2020. Um, <laughs> you know, I think the themes that Toni started out with that are part of her life are as important today as they, they were then. They're even they resonate more and more. Um, she is a kind of uh, f figure that we all follow, that you know, her ideas and her sense of justice and her sense of humanity are so powerful and, and I think also so inspirational. I mean, it's not just to African Americans. I think this is a person who, who speaks to people all, all over the world. So it's, a, it's just such a rare person, Toni Morrison. I feel that the issue of race at this time is so charged because of the systemic recycling of a narrative that absolutely <coughs> has to be addressed. But beyond that narrative, what, what I like to call attention to is the belief system that creates the narrative in the first place. We never, we never really go into that. We, we have a tendency to get very um, consumed by the constructs, which are, which are absolutely present. So the beauty, the beauty about Tony and that last scene in particular is that she, she brought it all home in talking about the essence of humanity which is that in the unknown between us is more of the known and more of the shared. And so for me, I, I sort of, I look to life that way and music is in and of itself, it's such an otherworldly force. It's such, you know, when, you're, when I'm writing, the process for me is extremely organic. It's very present. And so I don't have any room for second guessing that because it's so precious. So that's how I'm informed. We would like to thank you very much for being with us tonight.